So in this video, we are going to be using um, von Neumann's equation to um, show the stability of the crank nicholson method. So it'll be very similar how, um, I'll write that, I'll write this over here. So we have our temperature at some position J, and then we have N plus one. And then we want this to be equal to our n. And then we have some factor here that will be in front of our t of j n. And this factor here is denoted as omega. And um, we want this to be less than or equal to one. It's, it's very similar how we uh, did uh, this method, how we want the, the um, this middle term here for the x Explicit differential equation here. We wanted um, this to be less than one, um, so that our t of j to the n plus one didn't like shoot off to infinity or negative infinity. And so that's why it gave us this r here to be uh, less than or equal to one half. So we can do a similar thing, but instead of r, we're going to be using u. And basically, what we're going to show is that for any value u, so remember u is um, uh, it's our delta x squ squared. This is our u. And basically, um, this we're going to prove that the Crank Nicholson method is good for all values of u using uh, von Neumann's stability analysis all right and so now what we want we actually want these two equations right here this left hand and right hand side so we're going to copy that i don't really know what that means but copy and then paste so um what we're going to do is we have these two equations, or these three equations right here that we used over there. And we can go ahead and plug these in, in terms of our n plus one on the left-hand side and our n on the right-hand side. So we're gonna have a negative, so we are going to factor out a t j comma n plus one and then what's in our parentheses. So here, the difference between um, this term and this term is simply just a plus a j plus one, and that is given by uh, this relationship right here. So we can write in, uh, we got u, negative u, sorry, negative u, times e to the i k delta x. And then for this middle term, it's simply just uh, plus 2u. And then for this last term, it's u. And then this is j minus 1. And this that is given by this. And so we can do e to the negative i k delta x here for that. And then this is our left-hand side. And then for our right-hand side, it's very similar, except instead of factoring out a uh, j comma n plus one, we're gonna factor out a tj comma n. So we're gonna have a tj comma n, and then we're going to have a u, and then we'll have a e to the i k delta j, or delta x, plus a one minus two u, plus a u e to the negative i k delta x. And then this is our right hand side of our equation. All right, and so now what we can do is we want to isolate this t sub j comma n plus one term. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna divide um, this full term 
on both sides. So we are going to do um, uh, sorry, we're going to have T, J, N right here. And then we're going to have, so remember how we have this um, E to the I, K, delta X, and then E to the negative I, K, delta X. Remember when you add those together, um, it gives us this two cosine of our K delta X. But we can't forget our U's. So we have negative two U cosine of K delta X. And then this is plus one plus two U. And then this whole thing is divided by a two U cosine of K delta X plus one minus two U. So, and then we can factor out a uh, 2u um, or a 1 plus 2u on the numerator and denominator. So, what do we get here? We get a uh, 1 plus 2u times cosine of k delta x minus 1. And then we get a 1 plus 2u here. And then on this time we get 1 minus cosine of k delta x. So now we can um, rewrite this as um, we can rearrange it so that we can pull it a negative. So we'll have 1 minus to u that looks the same on the numerator and the denominator. So we have one cosine k delta x over one plus two u, one minus cosine of k delta x. So now let's look at our actual equation. So we know that u is um, this right here and u will always be positive um, because all of these terms are uh, constant and positive and one more thing that we can look at is this 1 minus or I guess we can just look at the cosine we'll just look at the cosine of k delta x we found out that earlier um, cosine of k delta x is always going to be um, in between, like the absolute value of it will be um, so it'll be less than or equal to 1 but also greater than or equal to negative 1. So that means that this term right here in the middle will always be positive. So what, another way we can rewrite this as um, we can throw in our omega that we had earlier and it will be 1 minus omega over 1 plus omega. And so omega can't be greater than 1. And so even if omega is 0, it is still 1 over 1, which means our um, uh, factor in front of this is still 1, which is within our boundaries here. So that lets us prove that this does not shoot off into infinity because our factor in front of our uh, tjn is less than or equal to 1 at all times. So this proves that um, the Crank-Nicholson method has um, stability no matter what uh, position step or time step you use and using um, 
von Neumann method. That's how we uh, prove that it's stability. So it's there when you graph it, no matter what time step or um, position step you choose, it's not your graph is always going to be stable.